Hey everyone, it's technology expert Burton Kelso here with another tech tip to help you get the most out of the technology in your life. Today we're going to talk about keeping your kids smart or safe on their smartphones. I think that should be a word. Smart and safe should be key. Uh, it's difficult parenting kids in this digital age, but you have to do it because we all have to respect, raise responsible ch children. And there's a lot of dangers that can lurk online um, if we allow our kids to browse the internet or use their smartphones unsupervised. Uh, there's things such as cyberbullying, which can lead to suicide. Um, there's sexting, which could land a jail sentence if caught with the wrong photos. And there's also texting and driving. Um, if you have a teen child who, um, who likes to text and drive and has a smartphone, we're going to switch screens like we always do. We'll talk about uh, how you should or what steps you should take when giving your kid a smartphone and how you can keep them safe uh, on the Internet by setting up rental controls. Uh, let's switch screens like we always do. And so when you have your child with a smartphone, it's very important that you um talk with them and let them understand what rules that you should you put in place as far as smartphone use. Too often parents will just give their kid a smartphone sort of as a badge of honor or sometimes it's just to keep them quiet so that they can adult or not adult, but it's not a good idea. You really have to set up rules and regulations before you give your kid a smartphone. Uh, it just allows them to understand um, how they should use their phone and also it sets the groundwork to let them understand that it's actually your phone and you're just letting them borrow it. Some of the you should definitely set clear-cut guidelines because kids could definitely encounter the following. Number one, there's cyberbullying. So if your child is bullied or knows of someone bullying, they need to step up and tell a teacher, uh, law enforcement, or even yourself. Uh, and if you do have a bully for a child, um, you need to let them know what the implications of that bullying are, which can lead to depression and suicide to the ones that are being bullied. Uh, but it's a big issue and uh, parents need to make steps to make sure that their child is not being bullied also and make sure that their kid is not being the bully. Next on our list is texting while driving. So if you have a teen that has a smartphone, you want to make sure that they aren't texting and driving. Texting makes accidents 23 more times likely to occur. So you definitely don't want your teen to be texting and driving. Next is sexting. You definitely do not want your kids sexting inappropriate photos. Many times those photos are done without the consent of, um, of children. And if you are sexting pictures of an underage child and your child winds up with the photo, in certain states, that can lead to child pornography charges. So you definitely want to keep your kid away um, from that problem. Next, you want to make sure that you set up phone free times. 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. or 9 p.m. to school time is the perfect time to set up as a phone free time. Uh, you want to make family meals or set it up family gatherings where there is no smartphone. Uh, you also want to restrict phone usage in certain areas of your home. Uh, you want to make sure that you um, keep the phone in your room so that your child is not texting or sexting or bullying late at night. These things happen. Uh, smartphones um, use cellular data so they can um, utilize that data and do things while you may think that they're sound asleep. So you want to make sure that you have access to the phone at all times, no passwords on the phone. Uh, you want to be able to grab that phone at any time and take a look and see what activities are going on with that phone. So it's important 
phone free times and make sure that you have access to the phone. Next is you want to make sure your children aren't sharing their personal information online. That's very important because once they develop a bond with someone online, they may let their guard down and start sharing family secrets. Another reason to be concerned is a lot of games on the internet have chatting features built in. Uh, games like Minecraft, Roblox, Clash of Clan, and many others have texting abilities built in. So while your kid is having fun playing those games, they could also be chatting up with a stranger who's trying to groom them or that just wants to get a hold of your personal information. So make sure your kids understand that sharing personal information is a no-no and it doesn't matter how much of a bond that they've created with the person online. Um, next is making in-app purchases. That's a big problem because many games have the ability to make purchases within the game. Some games utilize money that is built into the game, but other games want you to buy um, coins or level ups in order to continue playing the game. I know many of you out there that play Candy Crush or other games similar can understand that. So if your account is on your kid's account, they can definitely rack up purchases that could put you in financial trouble. Uh, they can also get online to specific online shopping accounts such as Amazon and make purchases without your permission. So make sure that your children understand that making in-app purchases is, n is not allowed. So other things that you need to consider as far as your smartphone is concerned is uh, you need to set limits on text data and purchases by utilizing the parental controls uh, that your cellular provider has. Sprint, T-Mobile, Verizon, and um, I can't think of the other one in this area. Um, AT&T is the one. Many of those providers have parental controls set up so that you can go into the account and you can set up parental controls that allow you to block specific things on the smartphone. You can block things such as texting, uh, even phone calls or who they can call. You can also block the purchase of apps or the downloading of apps depending on the parental controls that your provider has. So it's very important that you check your, with your provider to find out what parental controls they have. Another thing to consider is that even though you put parental controls through your provider on your child's smartphone, they can get around these by utilizing public Wi-Fi uh, networks. So if you notice your child is heading to the library or to the local coffee shop to use their smartphone, grab that smartphone because they may be doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing. Keep in mind, too, that it may be possible for you to go to your pro provider and find out if there's a way to block the Wi-Fi settings on your phone. Now, also parents should be aware of COPA, which is the Child Online Privacy Protection Act. Many services like Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram require children to be age 13 or older in order to use of these services. Now, children can always lie about their age and get access to these services, but that's where you as a parent comes in as far as making sure that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing on their smartphone. So keep in mind COPA before you turn over your phone over to a kid and allow them to get on social media. So you can set up parental controls, but honestly, the best parental control is a parent who monitors their child's smartphone use. Parental controls allow you to restrict purchases. You can add passwords to the phone. You can block off apps, and you can remove the ability to change privacy settings. Now, the good news is, is that on most smartphones, these abil this ability for parental controls is built in. On Apple devices, you can go to Settings, General, and Restrictions to go in and change some of the restrictions on your iPhone to make sure that your kids can't use specific apps. Uh, you can go in and set up a password so that they have to enter in a password in order to do things on the phone. On Android devices, you can add, go to settings and add another user or profile, and then you can toggle off apps or create what's considered a child-friendly 
uh, profile so that kids can download things from the Google Play Store uh, unless it's age appropriate and then you can also modify their account uh, so that they can't do specific things on their phone. Now unfortunately Apple does not have a child profile but um, the restrictions option allows you to restrict quite a few things on the iPhone. So hopefully these tips are giving you some ideas of how to proceed as far as your children's smartphone use. I know it's hard, but you definitely have to stay on top of your children's smartphone use to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing online and to keep them safe from all the dangers out there on the internet, such as inappropriate content, uh, cyber bullies, and of course online predators that are looking to exploit your child. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you to find out what tech tips you would like me to cover in future videos. Speaking of videos, be sure to subscribe to Integral's YouTube channel and to yours truly, Burton Kelso, on YouTube. There's hundreds of videos there designed to help you get the most out of the technology that you use. And be sure to follow us on social media. We share tips daily that are going to make you a tech rock star and will not keep you in the dark as far as technology is concerned. As always, take care of yourself and then do many things to make you smile and thanks for watching.